to tell you the truth, <laughs> I, nev- I, I didn't like sport <laughs> as much as I like it now. Um, after the bombing, I used to stay home at a lot and not going out and not communicate. And then um, the founder of, of the organization just found me, called me and said, let's go um, to a run. And I told I told her, I'm not running. And she said, let's do it. And I said, <laughs> no, be fine. And then she said, let's go climbing. I said, I'm afraid of heights. I, I can't climb. And she, she said, there are really cute guys over there. I said, awesome. Great. Start climbing. And from there, it's just, I found my quiet place. Wow. When I'm doing sport, any sport, it could be climb, surfing, um, skiing. I love skiing. And it just... Um, it breaks all the thoughts that you have all day in your mind. That's a, that's a remarkable sentiment. And I think anyone who engages in those activities uh, can understand uh, what, what you're saying there. That is, it's profound in some ways. I want to discuss uh, a, a bit of your own trauma there. In light of this, uh, it was, I believe, just after midnight, April 30th of 2003, a suicide bomber struck at the entrance mm-hmm. to the Mike's Place bar uh, on the coast here of Tel Aviv on the seafront. If you could touch on just what you experienced in that and and how you recovered. No one prepared you to something like that. Like that night was so traumatic. I lost three of my friends that night. Um, Wow. And everyone told me that I'm fine because I have two hands and two legs and I look fine. But inside, I, I really was broken. Yeah. And you need to learn to live with the trauma. It's not going away. It's not um, a cold that you can take a pill and a week after be good. I'm almost 20 years after, and I can tell you, I'm still trying to, to, to live with the trauma. That's... Um, that night felt like um, a horror movie. Um... All that understandable. I appreciate you even going there now with us on air. And I thank you for that, just being so real on this subject here. I think it's, you're communicating something so authentic. Uh, You know, as I I touched on when we got into the subject here, that Israel's been through a lot of wars, a lot of trauma. I mean, I even say back in those days, that chapter, I argue, is the most traumatic in the country's history, at least that that chapter, the Second Intifada, those traumas that still sit with you so heavily hit the nation in the worst ways. Uh, Despite all that, and and in light of what we just showed here, since Operation Protective Edge, it feels like there's been a bit of an awakening on this issue, on the post-trauma issue. Do you think we're collectively dealing with this better than ever before in the country? It's a hard thing to say, but... I think that they dealing with it better now, but not good enough. Okay. I can see the veterans in the U.S. and the way they treating them with the PTSD, and I think that we're a little bit behind. And if we need something like Tikvot mm-hmm. to get me out from the house and do things like sports, and it's not um, it's not from from the government or something like that. It's people that care that care about us. Today, I know that they give a little bit more support of um, psychiatrists yeah. and uh, psychologists, but I think that it's still not enough. We still have things to learn. Well, it certainly feels that way. I, I, do you feel positive on the subject, though, overall? That, I mean, or is, again, that there's more and more of these small organizations, these, these little efforts, this intimate interaction that seems to be emerging more and more, at least publicly. I, I feel that way. Unfortunately, they, it's, it's got public because of people that put yeah. themselves. Yeah, drastic situations. Into- right. Sherry Mervis, uh, can't thank you enough for coming on and, and, and sharing your own heart and emotions around this and for the work you're doing. Uh, just straight up say that, the work you're doing to help others dealing with post-traumatic stress. This is an issue very close to my heart. I, I, I'm a veteran myself of, of Operation Protective Edge in 2014, so I was there with the reserves. Thank you for being with us on this program. It's a topic I like to keep 
bringing up here. So thank you. Thank you, and thank you for, for the stage that you've given us. Thank you very much.